Hey YouTube, it's Patrick from the Babylon JS team. Welcome back to the channel. Today what I want to talk about is an extension of what we've been talking about recently with image effects. Uh, we talked about the glow layer before, and now what I want to do is talk about uh, a post-process uh, where we can take our scene and make it look however we want, whether we want it to look cinematic or stylized, um, really boost the color or make it kind of dramatic, sunset-y look. Um, and that's using a post-process called a LUT or a lookup table. Um, and so for Babylon, we have this the ability to use a LUT, um, a 3DL file from either one that you've downloaded or one that you've created yourself. Uh, and so I want to go through that process and show you how to jump into it. So uh, let me take you here first. Uh, this is our documentation page for post processes. And if we jump down to image processing, uh, we have a few um, examples uh, about how to bring a LUT into your scene and what it is, uh, how to configure it. Uh, but before we jump into too much more about this, let me actually kind of take a second and explain what a LUT is. So I have an image opened up here, which is what the 3DL file or the LUT is. Um, it is basically just a lookup texture. And so what we do is we look at the, the pixel that we're about to render, and then we go to this texture and look up a coordinate, and then this texture tells us how to change that pixel. And so we can do things like, I want to add more contrast. I want to posterize my image. I want to add a photo filter to make it sepia or warmer or cooler or whatever it is. This texture is how we we actually apply that effect. Um, and so, like I said, you can get these textures just by downloading them. Um, they're used in uh, video editing software like Premiere or After Effects. Um, you can use them in photo editing software like Photoshop. Um, it's really good for giving you kind of a consistent look across multiple different mediums. So like maybe you've got a LUT that you've applied to your video, but then you've got some photographs that you want to match that video. So you can use that same LUT to apply the same effect to the, to the photographs. So this is a really good way of making a consistent look across multiple, multiple mediums. So um, let me jump into uh, what we're going to do. So um, I've created this very simple playground. Uh, is just loading our you know trusty flight helmet model that shows our, our PBR rendering. And uh, what we're doing here is um, I have to give it a skybox because uh, this is a post-process effect, um, but it will not affect clear color. So if you don't have a background on your image, uh, skybox or other meshes or anything like that, and you're only relying on clear color, this won't actually apply to the clear color. So what I did is I created a skybox that's just gray. Uh, and that way the post-process effect will, will actually uh, affect both the mesh and the background. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're using standard materials or PBR materials, these work for both. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the next thing I'm adding is an environment light here, um, which we would need for our PBR rendering. And then uh, we're loading in our flight helmet model. And then after we load that, we get this promise callback that says uh, we're going to add in some color grading. Um, and so this color grading texture is the LUT that we're gonna we're gonna apply. Uh, and right now you can see I have one applied. It's just uh, I called it default 3DL, um, and it's a, a LUT with no post process attached to it. So um, it is exactly what you would normally see. Um, but I just wanted to show the difference about when we change the LUT with the one that we create, uh, how the how it all looks different. Um, and then uh, the next part here, we're just doing a simple rotation on the environment. So you can see the light rolling over this, the surface. Um, and then uh, that is all we need. So uh, the next question would be, how do we create the LUT? Now, the, the easiest way that I've found to create the LUT would be to use Photoshop. So let's jump over into Photoshop. So uh, what I have here is just a render of the scene. Uh, and so I just basically took a screen capture and brought that into Photoshop. And the reason that's important is because uh, you need to understand what you're doing to the image. Um, so you want to be able to apply it to uh, a sample from your scene. So just a, a quick screenshot will work. Um, and so th let me do this. Uh, I want to make sure that we're on the background layer um, because uh, you have to have the, the image uh, only as a background layer for this, this uh, export of the LUT to work. So uh, we flatten everything down to background, and then I'm just going to come down here and add in uh, any of these um, image effects filters. So we could do anything that we want, really. Uh, but the first thing I want to do, um, I'm just going to edit a photo filter. Um, and so you can see this is a warming filter. You know, you've got all sorts of different filters. You know, we've got a cooling filter. Um, I'm going to choose sepia, and I really want to crank it up here to about 75. So 
we've got uh, a 75% density on this uh, on this filter. And so, you know, it really does look sepia, um, but let's do one more effect on top of that. So um, I really wanna, really wanna show uh, how much you can do with this. So um, this one is uh, very, uh, very dramatic, uh, adding a posterized effect on top of it. So we've warmed everything up and then we've posterized on top of it. So we've get, you know, this, instead of we get a gray background, we've got a very red background. Um, you know, we've got a lot of, uh, harsh transitions, things like that. Um, if this was the look you're going for, then the next thing we do is just save it as a LUT. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, come over here to the export and then we'll export a lookup table. And now this is a, a fairly important part of this. Um, we, the, the quality level here, uh, the number of grid points that we, we assign, um, actually is uh, directly proportional to the size of the LUT. Um, it is also directly proportional to the precision of the LUT. So the larger you go, uh, the, the exponentially bigger your LUT will be. And when you're talking about downloads in, in the web, uh, especially on mobile devices or low-end devices, uh, you really want to be careful about how big of a file you make. Uh, but at the same time, you need to balance with how much precision you want. So um, uh, in... In looking at this, uh, I've worked out that a medium uh, quality for this specific uh, image effect works. But if I go to low quality, the, we don't have enough precision and the colors all shift. So you'll want to be able to, to play around with that. But know that this, this uh, quality slider is very important. It's a very important trade-off of how close do I want this look versus how big do I want the lookup table. Um, because basically the, the more precision we give it, the more quality, the higher the quality, uh, the larger the file, I mean, meaning basically we have more, uh, more pixels of color to, to translate uh, from our original image into this final processed image. So um, for now, we're going to go with a medium quality and uh, I'm just going to save it here for now because uh, we already have it done. Um, but you'll see it does go through a few steps there and once all of the uh, all of the flashing windows have finished, then your LUT has been created. And so then basically then all I have to do is assign the LUT back to the to the uh, to the to the scene. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to call uh, re, uh, rename this to custom because that is the, the name I saved the LUT from before. And then when we reload the scene, you'll see that we have once this reloads, uh, taken all of that LUT information and put it right into our scene. And so we are processing the image uh, using that LUT, and so we can mimic what we've seen in Photoshop here. Uh, but the, the nice thing is that it's live, so you know, as the light rolls around the, the, the image, um, you can see how that LUT is making this look. Um, but it's a really cool way to do some image processing. Um, and then you can make your scene look however you want. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to play with. Um, it's fairly easy to play with because you, you have the power of Photoshop right at your fingertips to create whatever uh, scene that you want uh, or any other look that you want. Um, and it's a, it's a very simple addition to your workflow. So I hope that uh, you like this uh, technique and that you give it a try and play around with it. We'd love to see what you do with it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this content, we would love if you'd subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and take care. We'll see you next time.